So I, I head up natural environment economics within DEFRA, which covers both national and international uh, uh, environmental policy, including the 25-year environment plan, the environment bill, and green finance strategy. So uh, there's no pressure there then. <laughs> um, I also sit on NERC's RISE and VMP um, program boards. And um, with this presentation, I'd like to take you through the challenges, progress, and future opportunities from a, a policy perspective uh, with respect to the environment. And along the way, bring out the need uh, for research innovation support to business and policy to support the effective rollout um, of, of all of this policy. So, um, as has already been mentioned, uh, the awareness of the environment has been certainly increasing. Um, I joined the civil service about 25 years ago, and uh, one of the first jobs that I had to do was actually via, value the biodiversity of uh, Britain's public forest estate. And uh, a academic colleague had done some research on biodiversity and its term uh, amongst the general public. And the, the responses were not really that encouraging to say the least, but the most memorable one was, yes, biodiversity is extremely important because it gets my clothes so white. <laughs> and I think even today, the term biodiversity, if you ask 10 people, you'll get 11 answers. So the terminology and the way it keeps changing really doesn't help matters, but it's clear that things have changed and the public awareness has definitely grown. Now this lays out just a fraction of the, um, sorry, seems to, that's right, yes. Um, this, seems, this lays out just a fraction of the um, issues at hand. Um, and uh, what can be quite obvious from this is that uh, the, the numbers aren't small um, and that there's the definite gap between where we want to be and where we are. And the indicators show that um, the situation is a poor one, um, that we're going in the wrong direction or that we're only making very slow progress. And we've had the UK National Ecosystem Assessment of 2011, and the more recent IPBES Global Assessment provides further evidence of a declining situation in the many areas that we all face. So we had the 25-year environment plan. Uh, that was published, um, gosh, over two years ago now. Time flies. Um, and... Uh, the aim of this was to leave the environment in a better state than we inherited it, a term that actually came from the 2011 uh, white paper. And this has led to a string of policies. Um, it also stated the, the solutions required all of us to be involved, not just government, but also it looked towards uh, the consumers and the private sector to find the solutions and to deliver them. And uh, just on a more personal note, um, the 25-year plan also came with a rather excellent evidence annex, which I recommend all of you to read. Um, it provided the evidence of what we knew at the time, and we were very aware of the, of the following um, Sir Ian's point, of the very um, diffuse nature of the evidence base, its confusing nature and its gaps. An evidence base that both government and business needs if we want to successfully deal with the um, environmental challenges that we're facing. So moving on from um, the, the challenges onto the progress. So the, the Environment Bill was reintroduced to Parliament on the 30th of January in 2020 and sets out how we plan to protect and improve the natural environment in the UK. It covers a wide range of issues and places the 25-year plan onto a statutory footing, ensuring the environment is at front and centre of policymaking. The bill was prepared through consultations with the public on numerous measures, including environmental governance, uh, the clean air strategy, 
biodiversity net gain, trees, conservation covenants, extended producer responsibilities, recycling, uh, deposit return scheme, and water. To say it was a vast bill is rather an understatement. It'll help to manage the impacts of human activity on the environment, creating a more sustainable and resilient economy while enhancing well-being and quality of life. It will engage and empower citizens, local government and businesses to deliver environmental outcomes. And then we have the, um, the uh, wastes strategy and the clean air strategy. Um, in relation to the green bill, uh, to the bill, uh, it introduces a series of measures that will fundamentally change the way the government, businesses and individuals produce and consume products. It will help move our economy away from the take, make, use, throw away system to a more circular model with key policies around resource efficiency standards, extended producer responsibility and single use plastic items. And then on the, the, marine, um, on the marine side, we have um, uh, delivered the most significant, ex significant expansion of England's blue belt to date. We've backed plans by Ascension Islands to, to designate over 150,000 square miles of its waters as fully protected, no take marine protected area. And we have pu published a fisheries white paper and the first fisheries bill in over 40 years. And on the trees and nature side, we've announced uh, 50 million pounds of funding for a new woodland carbon guarantee. And we have strengthened protections for ancient woodlands and veteran trees and other irreplaceable habitats. And then on a more social side, uh, there is the need to engage the general public. As I mentioned earlier, um, there's a lack of understanding of certain terms, such as biodiversity. But in order to um, uh, make a success of this, we need to engage and people's behaviors and attitudes towards the environment. And so, again, with the 25-year plan, um, I'm sure you've all read it and can quote it verbatim, and that you'll know chapter three inside out. But connecting people with the environment is one of the key elements coming out of the 25-year plan, and in particular, um, engaging children with nature, because if we can do that, then hopefully the future will be um, a lot brighter uh, in taking forward and, and delivering the environmental policies that we need. So in terms of opportunities, the, um, the Environment Bill presents us with quite a lot, and I've already mentioned the areas that it covers. Can you hear me still? Great, okay, fine, sorry. Um, case of tackling biodiversity loss, climate change, and envi environmental risks uh, to the public. Um, and ensuring that uh, the environment is at the front and is, is in the center of policy making. Um, acting as one of the key vehicles for delivering the bold vision set out in the 25 year plan, the Environment Bill brings about urgent and meaningful action to tackle the environment, environmental and climate crises we are now facing. And then we've got the reforming of the common agricultural policy. My own personal background is an agricultural economist, but thankfully this area of work has been tackled by another team of analysts. Um, but we know that the landscape that we, we, we favor and we love today is an industrial landscape from um, the, produced by uh, farming and forestry. However, as mentioned, there are concerns to what is happening to the environment, and the various biodiversity indicators show very worrying trends. The Environment Land Management Scheme will see a shift towards delivery of public goods with public money, and hopefully to contribute towards the commitment of a net zero by 2050. And then we've got the, the links between climate change and biodiversity. As the climate changes, there are implications for biodiversity, biodiversity. And conversely, biodiversity can help towards addressing climate change. For example, trees can help both with carbon sequestration 
assuming they're planted in the right place, of course. Um, but also, it can tackle such issues as temperature control within urban settings. However, as we tackle climate change, we need to bear in mind the trade-offs between other aspects of the environment. Covering large swathes of the countryside in solar panels may help solve one problem, but may then generate others. And it's not all about changes of land use uh, and land use industries. As mentioned before, there are opportunities to reuse resources within the wider economy, which in itself presents challenges for businesses and industry. And then we've got the green finance strategy. Um, needless to say, public funding will continue to be an important element as we go forward. But um, private finance also has a major role to play in reversing biodiversity loss and aligning financial flows with environmental ambitions. Last year, we published uh, the first green finance strategy which explores um, integrating climate and environmental factors into financial decision-making, which is nutterly called greening finance. And then we've got increasing the flow of private finance, private sector finance to environment and climate projects, also uh, nutterly called financing green. And then the third one is positioning the UK as a global green finance hub. But DEFRA is not operating alone. And as uh, mentioned earlier, we have a, a variety of um, uh, uh, groups uh, that DEFRA belongs to. And these are just a few of them. And we also have, as mentioned before, the Ecosystems Market Task Force, which delivered its final report in, I think, 2013, um, um, where the government's response stated that the task force report delivered a clear message that boosting the economy and improving the environment are not mutually exclusive. It shows that there is a genuine opportunity for the UK to be at the forefront of new exciting markets which value, protect and enhance our natural environment. One of the roles that I do have, one of my other roles, is working with Bayes as the local enterprise partnerships develop their local industrial strategies. And we have been pushing for natural capital to be incorporated within those strategies. To say that it's been a challenge would be an understatement and that success is still elusive to say the least. But we need to make that connection between the environment being a contributor economic growth and not a barrier. And that is it's more than just the farming sector or the tourism industry but rather green infrastructure can help with health, mental and physical health and well-being, attracting uh, employers into certain areas, help with issues such as um, urban climates and also um, issues around water availability and scarcity. Now, if I may sort of take this opportunity, Chair, just to um, plug um, Enker. Thank you very much. Um, this was launched on the 22nd of January, and to, to follow Sir Ian's point, which is an extremely valid one, that our stakeholders told us that the evidence base was very confusing, there was not enough of it, there was too much of it, and I have no idea where I'm meant to be starting. ENCA, uh, for, for the first time, we have tried to provide a single point where we have guidance, we have economic values, we have data, we have case studies, we have featured tools which allow individuals um, easy access to start understanding what natural capital is about, but also for those who are more familiar with natural capital to provide them with the evidence that they need. Now, when we put this together, which has taken quite a bit of time to say the least, um, we realized that there were evidence gaps and we need industry and also the academia to help us develop this even further. So hopefully to make it a tool, a resource that all can understand and use. So far, it's been a very positive response to various parts of um, stakeholders, but I'm sure we can uh, make it even better. So before I finish, I just wanna make the three final points. 
And the first one is that there is a clear evidence that there is a need for action and that beyond government, there is need, a need for inputs from the private sector and academia and that there is a need for evidence, not just economic, but social and science. And so I look forward to the output from this programme of work. Thank you very much.